So let's talk about, you know, say you've got those retained earnings inside of your corporation. So say you've got a million dollars inside of your, uh, your, your corp, whether it's your operating company or your holding company, uh, perhaps, you know, perhaps for simplicity and say it's a holding company. So, uh, you've got your operating company, the holding company owns it. And, you know, you've been, uh, stripping out the, the surplus from that opco down to the hold co it's a million bucks there and you are considering what do i do with this cash you know should i invest in securities should i purchase a bunch of stocks go in on tesla or should i invest in a bunch of real estate what are the different options what are the what are the tax consequences that that you see come across your desk well i'm not an investment advisor so we'll just sure. preface yeah. this answer by saying that but there yeah. are many things you can do with retained earnings as long as you structure it the right way. So uh, one of the things that people can do is they can do intercorporate loans, which are tax free, uh, where you're just loaning money from one corporation to another that maybe you could create to buy a piece of real estate. Because, of course, you don't want to, like I said before, you don't want to um, build up too much cash in an operating business because it will be exposed to liability. So the yeah. structure you just talked about where you have a holding company and the other thing is so that you can dividend money tax-free because intercorporate dividends are tax-free for the most part up into the bank company to hold the cash, leaving your operating company pretty empty so that if it does get into a lawsuit or something, you're not exposing all your retained earnings. So doing an intercorporate loan to buy some real estate, investing some of those retained earnings is something else you can do, or trying to withdraw those retained earnings in a tax efficient way. One of the tax efficient ways of doing that, which may or may not be closed off in the next budget, we'll see, is through uh, stripping out surplus, capital gain strip. Uh, surplus strip. And what that means is if you take out, there's there's basically two kinds of income when it comes to income tax. There's current income and capital gains. So current income is taxed. You, you just take the money out and then you apply your marginal rate, which is at the highest rate right now is around 54%. Yeah. A capital gain, only 50% of it comes into income. And then you apply your marginal rate. So if you took out $100,000, you would apply your marginal rate to that and pay a tax on it. If you took it out as a capital gain, which has to be done a certain way, only 50000 comes in, into income and then you apply your marginal rate to that. So the way mm -hmm. a capital gain strip works is instead of you taking a draw from the retained earnings of your company or a dividend, for which is still good because you get a dividend tax credit if you do that, instead you sell the shares in your corporation to an entity that has the cash to pay you. And when you sell shares, those are capital properties, so you get a capital gain. And so this has to be structured a certain way. There are other ways of doing this as well. Uh, but when you do it this way, uh, you're actually getting a capital gain instead of current income, and that's mm -hmm. taxed preferentially. And so you have to do this for a, a specified, not a specified, but for a legitimate business purpose. And a lot of the business purpose that people do for today are for asset protection, for the exact reason I was saying. You don't want the operating company to expose the retained earnings to liability. So the justification, the business purpose is to protect to protect those retained earnings. And so Got we're it. doing that yeah. now, but they may change some of the rules in the next month or two. We'll see. Uh, they've been uh, indicating for several years now that they're going to make that change, uh, but it hasn't happened. So, you know, we'll see where it goes. Right. Yeah. So when you're doing a, a surplus strip, do you need to sell those shares to an unrelated entity or it can be an, another entity that you control? We, we, you will own and control the same the entity same entity. Purchasing yeah. It, yeah. Okay. So it just you, really the yeah. purpose is just the question. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. it's largely a papered transaction where we're creating new entities to purchase the shares uh, for promissory notes that get canceled out. And, yeah. you know, it's fairly complex. It's probably one of the most complex tax structuring transactions out there today. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. not cheap to do, but you do an objective analysis to make sure that whatever it costs you to do it is substantially less than the tax savings involved.